Hey, Dane, what's going on, man? Hope all is well. This is Raphael Haynes with the Three Point Conversion. Um, just a quick two part question. First of all, if you can just speak a little bit about just the hiring of uh, Chance, I know you spoke about it on social media, but just your thoughts on it and how you feel. And then also joining this USA team, do you expect to, knowing that it's more of a team, team type, you know, um, atmosphere, do you expect to change your game just a little bit or do whatever Pop needs you to do if he asks you to change your game and not be that prolific scorer? Uh, I mean, as far as uh, Chauncey uh, and that hire, obviously, you know, it's, it's been talk over the years of um, him kind of moving into the front office and coaching uh, space. And uh, with us uh, letting Terry go after nine years, I think uh, our organization was set on uh, a leader, you know, looking for a leader of men, somebody that players will respect uh, and went through that process uh, as they felt they should, or as we felt we should as an organization. And uh, I had a, a prior relationship uh, with Chauncey uh, on the friendship level. And, you know, somebody that had a lot of success at my position was a, a champion, uh, finals MVP. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to uh, go in and do my job every year like I always do. Uh, you know, hopefully we, we make a strides in a, a positive direction and we could become a better team. Uh, Know, with a new coach, you know that's that's where I am with it. As far as uh, being here and being part of Team USA, I know that I'm not going to have to be in the exact same role that I am uh, for Portland. But I think my skill set and the things that I do bring to the table will be uh, very good for the team. Uh, my ability to shoot, make plays. Uh, I think I can uh, show that I'm a good defender uh, without as much responsibility on the offensive end here with, with so much talent. And I'm excited to do that. And, you know, just enjoy being on the team with, with the best players in the world. You know, you get to play with the best. Not everybody uh, is afforded that opportunity. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And uh, whatever whatever Pop comes to me and tells me uh, he, he needs me to do or expects from me, uh, I'll be ready to do it. Thank you. Hey, Dame, this is Tyler Tashman with the Oregonian. I hope you're doing well. Um, what were, I guess, the deciding factors um, in, in making the decision to play for the Olympic team this year? And, and was there a specific moment that you kind of uh, made the decision? Um, I wasn't really sure at one point because uh, I, I expected us to to have a, a you know a pretty solid run in the playoffs this year and that ended up being cut short and uh the fact that the season wasn't extended for me and you know on top of the season not being extended um you know it was a sour taste in my mouth after you know losing so early um against the team that was beat up and injured when i expected to win that series and um it gave me that that itch to, to jump right back in and play um and have a chance to to win and um, not have to sit around for a full summer thinking about, you know, what went wrong and, you know, how we exited the playoffs. So, um, like I said, I'm excited to be here and uh, have an opportunity to play with the best players in the world. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Next up is Brian Mahoney, and then we'll go to uh, Mark Berman. Hey, Damien. Um, I want to ask you, you know, a few years back, you almost got a chance to play for the U.S. in the World Cup in 2014. Um, and then, you know, when you didn't, uh, sort of, did you stay with the program as far as saying, you know, I want to be considered again, or was there some, you know, disappointment that maybe a couple of years later you, you weren't ready to play again, or how did the whole process go for you to get finally here now? Um, I think that that year when I was with Team USA, I was, um, I wanted to be a part of it. You know, I was, I was there to uh, have a chance to be on that team. Um, and I didn't make it, you know, and I, I had no issue uh, being cut. Uh, you know, I didn't feel like I was above being cut or anything. I just felt like the time that was spent uh, in, a, in the offseason, I, I just felt like I didn't, I wasn't given a great opportunity to make the team or make a, a different impression than that. So I think that's why it was a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth after um, leaving the team. Um, and I just decided for a few years that it just wasn't something that I wanted to do. You know, I was going to you know, use my summers to rest and try to 
and become a better player going into the next NBA season. Um, and I think at, at this point in my career, I'm, you know, 30, going to be 31 soon. And, uh, you know, this is, is something that would be a great accomplishment, uh, something that's great to be a part of and, you know, a great thing to add to my resume and my legacy as a basketball player. So, um, you know, that's that's that. Did you consider playing in, in 2016, the last Olympics? Um, Not really. You know, I, I wasn't really thinking of it. Uh, the following... I think World Cup, the World Cup after 2016 or maybe 2018 or 19, I don't remember what year it was, 18, I think. Um, you know, I thought about it, but I, again, I decided not to do it. Thank you. Mark Grimmer, go ahead, and then we'll go to Joe Bardone. Uh, hey, Damien, uh, how, how are you handling all that speculation about your future and rumors you may want to ask for a trade? And, you know, are you still mulling things in your mind? I mean, what, what's your what you're thinking at this point, you know, after the coaching hire? Uh, I mean, at this point, you know, it, it's a lot of things being said and um, sometimes words being put in my mouth and I haven't said anything. You know, I think uh, a lot of, well, should be all of the people who've covered me since I've been in the NBA, they know that if there's something to be said or if I think something or have something to say, I'm going to say it and I'm going to stand on it. So, like I said, uh, it's been a lot of talk. Uh, and I, nobody's heard what I've said, or nobody's heard me say any of these things. Um, but anything that I that I have to say, I'm gonna say it directly to to Neil, and I'm going I'm address it directly with with my team. So um, I don't really have nothing to say to you guys about it. Everything that I that I need to say and that I feel um, has been said to to Neil. So um, it's really nothing else that I have to say about it. Okay, Joe, go. Go ahead, and the next up is Dwight James. Uh, hey, Dame. Um, I'm not sure I can follow up on that without getting you fined, uh, so I, I guess I'll move on. Um, you, you know, you average th about 30 a game, or you can anyway, uh, and so does Brad, and, and certainly KD can. Um, do you feel like you have to give the ball up in this offense to, to make it work? Uh, I just think we got to let the ball move. Because, you know, whoever the ball finds, they, you know, we know that that next guy has the ability to put it in a hole. And, um, you know, I think that's the fun part about it for me. I didn't come here to try to play the exact same way that I play in Portland. I came here um, to, to be a weapon, you know, to play off of other guys. Like you said, I know Brad can fill it up. I know KD can fill it up. I know Jason Tatum can fill it up. Same thing with Zach Levine. So uh, understanding that, I'm just going – Get into the paint. If they collapse, I'm gonna make the right play and pitch it out. If I'm attacking the rim and Bam is diving, I'm gonna toss it in the air. If I happen to be on the weak side and somebody else is penetrating and the ball comes to me, I'm gonna shoot. So um, I came here excited to uh, to not be exactly who I've been for for my team, uh, but to use my skill set and you know all of my ability to uh, to complement everybody else on this team. Sometimes that might mean being more aggressive with the ball. Sometimes that means off the ball, um, but I'm, I'm excited to, to be a part of that. Thank you. Um, Dwight, go ahead, and then Zora Stevenson. Dame, I'm kind of curious. You played with the same coaching staff for a long time here in Portland, a long time. No disrespect to any of them, but what's it like for you to come into a different situation? You're, you got pop there, it's, it's different teammates. Uh, how different is this for you? Is it exhilarating? Is it fun? Hard? What's your reaction to it? Uh, it's fun because you see, um, you just you just see a different way, and uh, sometimes you a different language and you know a different a different type of energy about them. Like um, just talking to Pop, talking to Steve Kerr, talking to Jay Wright. You know, everybody they've done things at such a high level and for Pop and Steve Kerr specifically at a level that, you know, I've been wanting to, to be on, you know, not that they know something that my coaches uh, in the last nine years haven't known, but it's just when you get there and you have that level of experience and you have that level of success, um, it's, you know, it just hits a little bit different, um, you know, so I've come in here just listening a little bit harder, you know, having my ears um, open and wanting, wanting to hear what they have to say and why and why to do things a certain way. 
And, you know, it's, it has to be at that level. You know, it's the reason why, um, you know, they've had so much success. Thanks, man. Zora, you're up, and then we'll go with Sean Higgins. Hi, Dame. Zora Stevenson with NBC Sports. I wanted to ask you about your teammate of the year award. I was asking Pop about just those characteristics of selflessness and leadership, and he said it's going to be very important. And I know you're a first-time Olympian, but how much do you plan to display those characteristics and, and, and be a leader? And obviously, I know you're going to be selfless. You talked about just like listening and sharing the basketball, but that leadership part, how comfortable do you feel displaying? I mean, I, I feel very comfortable. I think uh, my leadership style has never been to try to boss everybody around and always be the loudest person. Sometimes it's being a listener. Sometimes it's taking instructions from other people and allowing other people to have have the stage. And uh, you know, if anything, that'll be easier with the level of players that I'm that I'm playing with. Uh, but I just think my who I am as a person. You know, I think that's being a good teammate. Uh, just trying to do my best to to contribute to winning and contribute to success um, and being selfless. Those are like my, my greatest strengths as a person and as a basketball player. So, um, you know, I think it'll be, I'll in that way, I'll be able to be who I always am uh, with this team. Okay, Sean, go ahead. And then we're we'll finish up with uh, last Dame going back to the, uh, coaching hire for a second. Uh, you said on social media that uh, during this process and during the search, you had been unaware of some of the allegations against Chauncey. Is that uh, something now that you do know about that stuff? Does that change at all how you feel about the hire or, you know, how comfortable you are with it? Um, well, I, when I said that I didn't, I didn't know. I meant the very first time that uh, right away when we, we let Terry go, I was asked, you know, about names that have been floated out there. And of the ones that I heard floated out there, I said, you know, I like Jay Kidd, I like Chauncey. Um, and at that time, I had no idea of any of it. And, you know, when I did learn of it um, and the process continued, it, I never felt like it was my job or my duty to say, you know, do this or don't do this. You know, I, I like I said, I do my job. I improve my game and I show up as a point guard of the team and you know in the past i've never stepped on on anybody's toes and said you know or demanded anything or told anybody what to do and it was no different in this situation um so that i mean that's all i can really say i i've known chauncey before and i never knew of of that um until this coaching process uh came into play and uh our organization, you know, they, they said they did a thorough investigation. They went through everything and they went through the process of hiring a coach um, as they did in, in, in a comfortable way. And that's not my decision, you know, or my job to say this guy's hired or this guy's not hired or anything. So um, this is what it is now. So uh, here we are. Final question from Tim Reynolds. Thanks. Go ahead, Tim. Thank you, Craig. Hi, Dame. Um, even with all the amazing amount of offensive talent on this team, is it a stretch to think that you guys can be as good defensively as you are on the offensive end, just with you know the length, with you know guys like Bam and Draymond, with the on-ball defenders you guys have? Can you guys be as good at, at that end too? Do you think? I think so because we. Because of the ability we have offensively, everybody kind of knows, like, I can give more defensively knowing that, you know, it's going to be okay offensively. Everybody's capable. Everybody has ability. Everybody is elite offensively in the NBA season. So uh, the responsibility and the load offensively would be much less for every guy. So, of course, defensively, like I said, we can give more and be more locked in and attentive uh, on that end of the floor. And it's been, you know, the – the number one thing that you know they've been hammering home with is we got to defend, we got to be into the ball, we got to be physical. So um, guys are so great offensively that I don't know if we can be as great defensively as we are offensively, but I know we can be very good, and uh, you know I know that it can complement what we can do offensively. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Damon.